Hello everyone, good morning. Today is the day we are going to be writing our non-chronological reports in full. So have a think about how you want to do that. You might want to type this up. Um, you might want to record it as a presentation. Um, you might want to just handwrite it in your books. That's absolutely fine. Um, but those are your options. So make sure you know what you're doing um, and then grab your pen and paper and let's get going. First of all, we've got a small bit of grammar because I know the writing takes a long time, but we do need to keep on top of that grammar. Um, am I correct? I've used semicolons in these sentences, but have I done so correctly? So all you need to do is write down yes or no for each of these sentences. So I'm going to read them out, pause the video, and then I will reveal the answers to you. OK. The trees were looking lovely. I just ate a banana. Am I correct? Number two, the ancient Greeks loved sport. They held the Olympics every four years. Number three, the ancient Greeks offered gifts to the gods. They believed it would bring them good fortune. And the final one, as I was waiting for the bus, I saw one of my friends. OK, hopefully you have written down whether you think they are correct or not. And I'm going to reveal them now. And hopefully you know why they aren't correct as well. Can you explain why they're not? Um, so this first one is not correct, not correct. And we know that, don't we? Because the two sentences, the two clauses here, they are not related. The fact that the trees are looking nice and that you just ate a banana. They are not related to each other. So that is a no for that one. Um, the ancient Greece, Greeks love sport. They held the Olympics every four years. Yes, that is correct. That works perfectly well. Um, we could have had a because in there, couldn't we, instead of our semicolon. Our next one about offering gifts to the gods is, yes, it's correct. Um, because again, we could have a because instead of that semicolon. And the last one, as I was waiting for the bus, I saw one of my friends. Not correct. Not correct because you would just use a comma there, not a semicolon. It's one of those fronted adverbials, isn't it? So we don't need to use a semicolon there. OK, hopefully you got those right. Don't worry if you didn't. So today we're going to put everything together that we've learnt and write up our reports about the Olympic Games, OK? Uh, we haven't done a plan as such for this one, but you did have all of your notes. You've already had a go at turning something into a paragraph and you've already done an introduction and a conclusion. So today it's just a case of putting everything together and making sure we've got all of our success criteria in there, OK? so. Uh, our success criteria are subheadings. You do need to have subheadings for all those different sections, those different paragraphs you're going to be writing about. Some facts and figures. A did you know box, or it might you might call it amazing facts box, or I don't know, fun facts or something. Um, and cohesion. So we're looking for those links between sentences. We're looking for it all in the same tense and a variety of sentence types, OK? So here is my example, and it goes on to the next page as well. I'm going to read it through. As I am reading, have a look. Can you spot where the success criteria are, OK? All of these things we're looking for down here, and I've written a little note, subheadings, facts and figures, did you know box and cohesion? I can already see my did you know box. So that would be something I could tick off already. OK, the ancient Greek Olympic Games. The Olympic Games are one of the most popular events in the world. However, many people do not realise how far this ancient tradition traces back. The Olympics started as a religious festival over 2,700 years ago in the southwestern city of Olympia. Every four years, around 50,000 Greeks would travel to compete against each other in a range of sporting events. 
Origin of the Games. The ancient games were not only a celebration of sport, they are a religious festival held to honour Zeus, the king of the gods. It is widely believed that visitors flock to see the temple of Zeus, inside which stood a huge gold and ivory statue of the king of the gods himself. Furthermore, the main event of the Olympics was not a sporting event, but a sacrifice. On the third day of the games, a hundred oxen were sacrificed on the altar of Zeus. And I've got my did you know box here that says, the Romans eventually banned the Olympics in AD 393 after Rome conquered Greece in the second century BC. Oh, I've got but the, I don't think my whole thing photocopied on there, which is a shame. So I'll just, um, oh dear, I'll just put a little line through that. There, okay, there we go. Um, and then we've got events is my next subheading. According to historians, running was the first event to be included in the Olympic Games. The athletes ran up and down a 192 metre track in the stadium. If you were caught cheating, you would be disqualified and beaten. Another popular event in the Olympics was the discus. In this event, athletes threw a stone or a metal discus as far as they could. As in the present day Olympics, wrestling and boxing were incredibly popular in ancient Greece. The only rules here were that you couldn't bite or poke people in the eye. Because of this, severe injuries were not uncommon. So let's have a little look at our success criteria. Subheadings, we've got origin of the games, we've got events, um, facts and figures. We've got our 100 oxen here. We've got a 192 metre track. Um, we've got a couple of figures here and a date here as well. We've got our did you know box. I'm going to put that in my facts and figures. Did you know box? And then cohesion. So all of these linking phrases between our sentences. So I've got a however here. I've got every four years. I've got furthermore. It is widely believed that um, what else? In this event, as in the present day Olympics, um, what else have we got? Because of this, there we go. So um, pause the video now and what you could do is jot down any of these facts and figures you want. You might want to use some of these linking phrases, jot those down on your paper um, and you might want to use those when you're writing yours up. OK, then we've got my final um, section here. Participants. So this is who could take place, uh, who could take part in the Olympic Games. Only men, boys and unmarried girls were allowed to attend the Olympic Games. Married women were barred. If they were caught sneaking in, they could be thrown off the side of a mountain as punishment. However, women could still own horses in the chariot races at the Olympics and unmarried women had their own festival at Olympia every four years. According to historians, this was called the Herea and was held in honour of Hera, Zeus's wife. Winners were awarded crowns of sacred olive branches, the same as men. But in ancient Greece, only Spartan women were really interested in sport. We know that about the Spartans, don't we? Then I've got my conclusion at the end here. The ancient Greeks have influenced many parts of our society today through philosophy, politics, art and theatre. However, it seems that their most triumphant legacy was that of the Olympic Games. And we looked at our conclusion, didn't we? You could do the um, what's coming, uh, something you might like next conclusion instead from yesterday. OK, so here we have some more of our linking phrases. Um, couple of howevers, according to historians, that's a really good phrase to use when you're writing something about history. Okay, some of our cohesion there. So same thing, pause the video now, jot down any notes that you might want for this section. Okay, if you didn't particularly get many notes on this section on Monday, steal some from here. It's quite interesting that the women had their own Olympic event as well. Um, 
So that's something. And the punishment of being thrown off a mountain seems a bit extreme. But there we go. The Greeks were very, um, very like that. OK, now it is time for you to start writing your own. Now, I've set mine out ready. If you're doing it on, on a computer, you might want a text box for the did you know, um, or it might be easier to do it in PowerPoint because you can move boxes around a bit more easily. Um, so our heading is going to be the ancient Greek Olympic Games. I've got my did you know box here ready so that when I'm writing, everything's not going to get squished together. I've got some of my linking phrases on the side that I might want to use and um, I'm going to get started. So I'm going to help you at the, out at the beginning. You've got your own introduction already. So it's just a case of making that um, the best one that, that you can do. So let's have the Olympic capital letter Olympic capital letter games are one of the most popular events in the world exclamation mark however comma many people do not know how far back this tradition, tradition goes Full stop um it is over 2,700 oh, years old and attracted around 50,000 spectators each year. Full stop. Um, what else, what could we do? Spe spectator, oh, I haven't spelled that right. Spectators, spectators each year. And that would be enough for my introduction. Then I'm going to do my origin of the game. So how did it all start out? And that's all about the fact that we had um, it all start as a festival for Zeus. So again, go through your notes and write them up into a nice cohesive paragraph. You may have even practiced, practiced this paragraph earlier on in the week. OK, so give yourself a good half an hour at least to do this. You might want to type it up. You might want to do it on PowerPoint. Absolutely fine. You might just want to write it in your book, which is also fabulous. OK, um, really looking forward to reading these and do send them to us because then we can stick them up in the classroom as well. Thank you very much, children, and good luck.